In the last video, I showed you how to make a fully AFK farm, but it has a lot of flaws that we are going to fix in this brand new version. If you tried to make the first version of this farm, you would have found it pretty annoying to find the exact coordinates of the slash set spawn location, as you had to get the exact decimal point on every coordinate for it to work properly. But in this new farm, you'll only have to worry about the way you are facing. You would have also found that when farming, you would only hit the first two or three blocks of the nether ward, making it very inefficient and not infinite, which I have completely fixed in this new version, making it fully infinite with a total of five rows and a slower farming speed. So let's go over this new version and this time I'll show you every detail you'll need to make it as inexpensive as possible, starting with the items and pets you'll need this time. So for this farm you'll need a base speed of 127 speed while holding your hoe. This means that you won't be able to use all of your fermental armor, however it will drastically make the farm more efficient and it will get you much more money than before. To get to this speed I use my bountiful hoe which gives me 13 speed. Then I use no accessories that give speed and disable all of the god potion effects that give speed boosts. However, I do have a sentry cake speed boost active, which you can't disable for the remaining time it's active. Once it's finally worn off, I'll be able to use the fermental helmet and boots on the bustling reforge, which will give me exactly 10 speed, which the sentry cake was doing. And by using these two pieces of armor, it will give me an extra 105 farming fortune. However, if you have too low or high speed, you can check your speed stats in your profile menu to see what you can get rid of. If you have too low speed, you can get different talismans to raise it, and if you're too high, you can get rid of some of those talismans. Now once you have that 127 base speed with no pets on, we can take a look at all the pets that we need, in a bit more detail than last time. To start with, you're going to need an ammonite pet to get over 255 speed. This pet gives plus 2 speed for each mining and fishing level you have, so you'll need at least 64 levels combined between them. So that means that you can have, let's say for example, mining 40 and fishing 24, but it can be any way around. This pet also needs to be legendary, but can be any level as long as you hit 255 speed. It does give more speed the higher level, but it'll be completely fine as long as you have over that 255 speed. Then you'll also need a ocelot pet again, but it can be any rarity since the speed it gives is the same for all of them. The only thing it needs is level 100, so you hit the 50 speed that it gives. Next you'll need the rabbit pet, which can be any rarity that you can get. But again, it just needs to be level 100 so it gives the maximum speed that you can get from it. And then you're going to need a armadillo pet. With this pet, it gives 1 speed for 50 defense, and we need a total of 6 speed from the pet. This means that you're going to need between 300 and 349 defense. To get into this range of defense, if you aren't in it already, you can use power stones. There's quite a few cheap power stones that you can get, but it really depends on what your base defense is. So have a look through all of the power stones that you have to try get in between that 300 to 349 range. Also note that the pet gives 200 defense at level 100, so you can take that into account. This pet must also be legendary, but it can be any level that you can get. And lastly is the elephant pet. Since this one doesn't give any speed, it can be any rarity and any level. This pet is just used for getting the most farming fortune possible in between the rows of water, and for the last water gap in the farm. If you're using all 5 pets, which I very much recommend, you'll need 5 pet roll slots. So if you have 4 right now, you'll need to get another auto pet item to get an extra 2 slots. So those are all the pets you'll need, and hopefully you can get some cheaper ones from the last version. And also, a lot of people ask what garden level you need to be, which it can be any. The higher garden level you are, the more efficient the farm is going to be. I'm currently garden level 13 and it is pretty much infinite with the fire rows it has. Now that you have all the pets you'll need and the base speed of 127 while holding your hoe, we can now move on to the new farm layout. To start off with, the spawn is still the same with the 2 block run up and the 2 block water gap right after it. However, the slash set spawn is much easier to do. To do it this time, you'll need to go to the far right of the block and then move all the way to the bottom right of it. Then all you have to do is worry about the direction you are facing. To do the facing angle, you'll need to press F3 and then look at the line that says facing on it. The only two numbers you need to worry about here are the two in the brackets, and those will have to be negative 82.5 and 6.0. To get the right numbers easier, you can use the Optifine feature to zoom in and move your head much slower than usual. So once you're at the back right of the starting block and you're looking in the right direction, you can now do slash set spawn to set the new spawn in the farm. So then we can move on to the water and potatoes. Like I said before, you have the two block starting gap followed by a two block water gap that goes on to the next row. And then you'll need a sign right beside the water so you don't get slowed down by it after you've passed the gap. Then right after the sign you'll need a two block line of potatoes for the pet rollers which we will talk about in just a bit. Moving down a row, you'll need a 3 block open gap so you have the correct speed going into the water, followed by a 2 block water gap once again. Then you can again place a sign with a 2 line row of potatoes. The next row is now a 4 block open gap and you'll need 3 soul sand to the far left of the blocks. And make sure you do have all of these gaps the exact same, or it won't work because you need the exact speed for all of them. Then you can put a 2 block gap of water for the next row again, and put a sign and 2 potato lines. 
And then for the last row with water, you'll need a 5 gap run, starting with dirt, then soul sand, a slab, and then soul sand again, and another slab. Then followed by a 1 block water gap. Then just place 2 potato lines once again, and for the last row you can place the 2 potato lines right after it too. So that is all you need for the start of the farm, if you need to take a closer look you can always visit my garden. Now let's move on to the end of the farm. This farm is 5 plots long to make it the most efficient possible, but you can make it smaller as long as you have the last plot fall into the void. So the end of this farm is pretty similar to my last, but with a few changes. You'll need to put two lines of carrot, then wheat, sugarcane, potato, and a line of 10 mushrooms. You need all of these to allow you to change pets for when you respawn, which will switch you to a lower row. Make sure you have at least two lines of these crops in this order, so it doesn't mess with the pet rolls that we're gonna look at in a bit. For the new mushroom line, you'll need to make it go down a block at the end, so you're unable to hit the last few lines of mushrooms. This is because if you break all of the mushrooms, they'll no longer be able to grow, so you need to make it block lower so you don't break them. So once you have all of these set up, you'll now have an entire new farm. Now let's go over the pet rollers that you'll need to set up. Like I said before, you'll need 5 slots of pet rollers since you have to use 5 pets for this design. To start off with, you need to set a ocelot for the carrot collection, rabbit pet for the wheat collection, armadillo for the sugarcane collection, elephant for the potato collection, and ammonite to the mushroom collection. By doing these pet rollers, it will change your pet at the end of each row, which will change your speed. By changing the speed, it will make you a bit slower each time, so you'll be too slow to get through some of the water gaps, allowing you to go through each row. A lot of people also ask me if they can just use Rancher Boots, but this will just make you have a set speed, so you won't be able to go through each row properly. So now we have the full farm made and all of the pets and speed levels set up. So to start, we will fly over to the void and hold A and left click at the same time. Then you can hold these forever while you farm. As you can probably tell, this farm is much more efficient. This is because the speed is much lower, allowing you to farm about 4 rows of nether wards at the same time. This also allows us to be able to use the 5 rows, so it's pretty much infinite depending on your garden level. While testing with all of my farming fortune currently, I make about 11 million coins per hour with the Fermento helmet and the boots equipped. This is pretty good considering that before the teleport pad update, I was making about 14 million coins an hour. A lot of people also ask me if it's worth getting into this, considering they might just patch something with it. But the way I see it is they didn't fix teleport pads for a full 2 months, so they might just be slow at fixing this. But that's just my thoughts on it, they could pretty much patch this at any time. A lot of people also ask me about the cost of having to buy all of these items, and if it's actually worth it to risk all of them. But if you buy all of these items and set up the farm, you'll probably make your money back quite fast. Even if they do patch this farm, you can always sell those items back again. Or you can just keep them since a lot of them are pretty useful anyway. So if you really want to use a super easy farm that you barely have to pay attention to, I would suggest building it. So that is pretty much everything you need to know about setting up this farm. If you have any questions at all, I'll be in the comment section once again replying to all the comments. And thank you to all of our patrons for continuing to support our websites, discord bots, and videos. Check out all the perks you can get in the link in the description. Thank you all for watching.